Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming to my session today, where we'll be talking about multimedia. Um, since you're all here, I assume you're all interested in multimedia, but just for my own curiosity, so bear, bear with me. Um, how many here have used multimedia frameworks in software development? Just any framework, any platform. Uh, so pretty much everybody, almost. How many have used multimedia with Qt? Using one of the built-in frameworks in Qt? Okay, so some people. And how many have used multimedia with Qt Quick? Okay, I'm seeing two, three hands. So most of you will learn something today. The rest of you, you can just sit and pray around. Before we get started, I want to introduce myself. My name is Jonas Rabi. I'm a software engineer in uh, the multimedia team in Qt. I joined Nokia back in 2005, um, just out of the university. And in November last year, I hitched up the family from Denmark and moved to Australia. Um, I try not to blend into the background, but most of the past year has been bug fixes and now the migration to Qt 5. The multimedia team is based in Brisbane, Australia. Um, we're seven people. There has been a lot of changes in the team in the past year. Um, but we're seven people again. We're Michael, our lead, Michael Goddard, and then five engineers, um, Sergei, Ling, Dimitra, and uh, Derek, and then myself. And then we have one, one QA guy who carries around a big hammer to hit us over the head when we don't fix his bugs. Um, and we also have an open position. So if you love multimedia, find Australia to be interesting, and want to help shape the future of Qt, you can apply today. The focus of this talk will be multimedia in uh, the current Qt SDK. Um, all my examples and demos will be shown on the desktop, but they're equally applicable to mobile development. Um, first off, before I get into more detail, I want to just touch on the naming. Not because I want to go through the history of Qt uh, and multimedia and Qt, but because it can be somewhat confusing. In the current version of Qt, there is a module or a component called Qt Multimedia. Stay away from this. It has been deprecated. We do try to port all critical bug fixes back to Qt Multimedia, but the API of the component of the uh, functionality included in Qt Multimedia has diverged now so that you do get a much better uh, experience if you use Qt Multimedia Kit, which, confusionally enough, is delivered with mobility, but it's not actually part of mobility. Yes, I know. Um, it does work fine on the desktop, even though it's a deliverable mobility, and so does most of the other mobility components. I say other, but yes. So the future of multimedia in Qt is um, Qt 5. You all went to the last session and heard about the Qt 5 roadmap. Um, in Qt 5, there will be one multimedia framework. It will be a Qt Essentials, so a core component of Qt. And it will be called Qt Multimedia. Yes, no more kit. It's my little present to you today. Um, it had, the migration hasn't completed yet. All the renaming has been done, but it's still based in the Qt Multimedia kit repo. And the, the change over to the Qt Multimedia repo will happen this week. Um, also, if you attended last session, you would, you'd know that the future of Qt 5 is all about Qt Quick. And Multimedia Kit, or Multimedia, sorry, will also be about Qt Quick. We're introducing a host of new uh, elements that you can use to create awesome and creative apps. You can already see them in the repositories on Kitorius. Um, I'm looking forward to the time where I can spend more time showing you and telling you about this. But in the meantime, if you are interested in the future of Qt Multimedia in Qt 5, 
you can go to cuteproject.org and look at the current status of the Qt5, which does include Qt Multimedia, or Kit as it's still known today. Yeah. So I want to assert that Multimedia Kit already plays well with, with the Qt Quick. With this session, I hope to convince you of this, and with my examples to get you a little bit excited about it. Um, directly after this session, Gareth Stockwell, who's sitting down in the back, uh, we'll be talking about in-depth uh, usage of multimedia on mobile devices. Um, if you love mobile devices and the challenges that they afford when you do multimedia development, that is definitely a session for you. I know I'll be there. So let's dive into the APIs. There are three QML elements in Qt Multimedia Kit that I want to talk about today. The first is the audio API. Um, it handles playback of audio. It can play compressed audio files, um, for instance, MP3s, or whatever compressed audio files are supported on your platform, um, which depends on licenses and codecs and all that. Um, it is a perfect element for if you want to create a music player or for background music in a cute, quick-based game. Um, for the sake of brevity, I've only shown the playback-related uh, methods and properties here. Um, but there is a whole host of other, uh, other properties and signals that can be quite useful as well, including a lot of metadata support. Um, the full signature can be viewed on the documentation page, doc.cute.nocula.com. Um, as long as, uh, as well as the signature for the other elements I'm going to show. The API is quite simple. We have play, pause, stop, and then uh, two properties to show the status of the playing. Um, we also have the ability to set the volume and mute. We can set the position so we can fast forward and rewind, as I'll show you later uh, in regards to video. Or if you are doing a game and you have a soundtrack as a sound file is playing in the background, and then you get to a certain part of the game, you can jump to a specific position in the sound file to create the right mood. Um, and finally, we have the ability to set the source so that you can find what file it is. That's a simple URL string. The video element is very similar to the audio element. Um, if not for the first line, I think you could confuse them very well. Um, it's for playback of video. Again, the supported files depend on the platform you're working on and deploying on. Uh, the signature uh, is quite simple, so I won't go through that as uh, that either. Finally, there's the sound effect element. It's created to provide low latency playback of uncompressed audio files, for instance, WAV files. Um, as the name implies, it's useful for sound effects. Excuse me. The signature is also quite simple. You can play and stop. You can see whether it's playing. Always nice. You can loop the sound, sound effect, and you can set the volume and mute it. And finally, you can set the source. Now, you may be sitting there with a feeling that those three elements won't cut it for the applications that you're looking at. And fortunately, it's dead easy to create your own uh, Qt Quick elements that use Multimedia Kit. If you do create a, uh, using C++, create a, a Qt Quick element, then you can get the full functionality of the Multimedia Kit C++ API. And one of my demos will show exactly that, using a custom element to do some low-level uh, low audio uh, processing that we can't do with the current Qt Quick APIs. And that brings me to my demos. Yay, demos, code. So we have here a video player. Well, we have a QML file. Um, you can see I have some buttons. and. I'm calling them five 
7 and 6, which is kind of weird. But if we just go to the button real quick, you'll see that it's because I'm setting the, the fund family to the Nokia Pure Simple Fund, which is available from the Nokia brand book for everybody to use. So this is the same symbols that I used in the in Hamilton on the N9 and also in Symbian Bell. Um, so the playback buttons will have the same. I've cheated and of course know which letters correspond to which symbols. But if we play this or build and run this, then we have a um, player which doesn't really do anything. Let's do something about that. I'll just hide this so that we don't. There we go. Okay. So we want to show some video. So we use the video tag or video element. And we call it video. And we specify the source. And I have cheated again and downloaded a movie. If you haven't seen Big Buck Bunny, I suggest you all go look it up. It's quite funny. It's an open source video project, 3D project with, from the Blender Foundation that uh, is available as uh, Creative Commons sourced. So we're allowed to use it. And then we want to just make sure that we show this all over the place. So we have the whole, whole screen filled with this movie. Next, we set um, some actions on our buttons. Oops. So we have unclicked, which is a signal I'm emitting from my button. And then we say video.play. Oops, if I can type. So if we play this and press the play button, then it starts playing. But I can't really do anything else. I can't fast forward or anything. So we better fix that before the music gets too loud. I'll just turn it down a little bit so you can still hear my wonderful voice. So we want to change depending on the, the video status. So video dot playing, if it's playing, and if it's not paused. So if it's playing and not paused, then we want to show the pause symbol, which is eight. Otherwise, we want to show the playing symbol. Nice. Um, and then we want to have similar logic here for the for the actual functionality of the button. Ah, and then we Oops. I can't type worth anything right now. I apologize for that. So now we have our little application here, and it changes to a pause symbol. That's nice, and then we can pause it. But we still don't have any real functionality on the rewind and fast forward buttons. So let's just add that. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard. So we say on click video dot position, um, and going backwards minus equals. Five seconds. It's in milliseconds, so this is just five seconds. And the same on the on the fast forward button, of course. So let's see what we have. We can play. We can fast forward. And we have the big bunny. So there you have it, a video player in 10 minutes. <laughs> How cool is that? So video players are fine, but sometimes you want to dive deeper. And that's what I'm going to do with this tone gener generator demo. If you um, have played with the, with the, sorry, with the, audio output example in um, in Qt, then you will have seen the generator. It's a, excuse me, it's a simple 
generates a simple sine curve that we can use to uh, to um, put into our audio output. So we will simply play that that sound curve. Um, yeah, it's code copy paste. <laughs> Let's not go into that. The generator is is worth to mention that it's an I/O device, and that's what that's the interface you have for the QRD output. So you can stream data into this API. And what else do we have to look at? Well, the main function is kind of we do uh, register our type, which is handy and all. And then we have our QML, which doesn't contain anything related to our tone generator yet. And then we have the tone generator itself. I'll just get both of these files up and get this out of the way. So the tone generator is a Q declarative item. It does some painting, which we'll see in a second. And it has start and stop functions, and it has an audio output and an instance of our generator. Well, it will will have that in a second, because that's what we have to add. We have to set up our audio output so that we can play some audio on this system. So what we use is a Q-Audio format. And on this format, we um, set the Let's see, what, what do we want to set? We set the frequency, which is the data set, data frequency, um, which I've already, I've added some constants up here so that we don't have to sit there and figure out what everything should be. Um, we set the, um, the channels, that's always good, stereo. Set the sample size, 16 bits, and then we also need to set the the type, and that's a signed int. Oops, need an extra colon for that. There we go, and then we need to set the the byte order because endianness and all that. And then finally, we want to set the format, the codec. And that's just audio PCM, so pulse modulated uh, audio data. And then we want to make sure that this actually works on this machine, so we create a Q Audio device info, and um, that's just the the default info for this um, for this device, default output device, perfect. And if the info dot is format supported format, and that should of course be if it's not supported, then we want to say info format should be the nearest format to this format that is supported. Very nice. So now we have a format, so we can start actually using it and doing some stuff. Let's do some stuff. So we have a um, our generator. And we create a new generator. And give it all the different, the format, the duration. Um, and we have a duration in seconds up here. And this is in microseconds, so therefore we want to add a full load of zeros on that. The frequency is the, not the data frequency as before, but the frequency that we want to play, and the default frequency is here, set at uh, 800 hertz. And we want to just make sure that this gets deallocated when we, um, when we close this. Oops, I'll just put this down on separate lines and so you can see it. So that's standard cute syntax. Then we have the output, which is a uh, QR auto generator, uh, generator output. There we go. 
and that takes the format and the parent. Okay, so now we have set up audio output and we have a generator which generates a, a sine curve which we will play back on our speakers in a second if I don't turn you all deaf before then. This also contains a simple paint function which does draw a sine curve with this uh, with the same frequency as, as specified. And drawing a sine curve, I mean, you all done that before, we don't have to go into that. We can set the frequency which just passes into the generator. Uh, we can start, which starts the I.O. device, so our generator, and it starts the output. And we can stop, which stops the output. So that's all well and good, but now we need to just make sure that we are using it. So that's where we include. I've already uh, imported my examples, which was what I used for my um, for my QML element in the registration. So I can use a tone generator element, and we give it an ID, and we want to make sure that it's actually visible on screen since I'm drawing stuff into it. So we uh, give it an X coordinate and I've thought ahead of time at having some values for this. Um, fingers top, uh, title dot bottom, angers bottom, and let's see what this is called. Ah, row one. Wonderful descriptive name. And then we have the margin, so that it looks nice. And then we want to give it a width, so that it's actually visible. Um, so the width minus two times the margin. Okay, awesome. So let's see what that looks like. Ooh, we have a sine curve. Is it even visible there? Yeah, I guess you can see it, right? Huh? And we have the frequency, um, but nothing happens when we press the buttons, which is kind of sad, and we can't change the frequency. So let's do something about that. So we have uh, our start and stop buttons. So unclicked. I like my unclicked. Um, tone gen dot start, and similar on stopped. Okay, let's see. Now uh, hold yours because this is 800 hertz. Woo! So it's a pause image in the TV, right? So that's all well and good, but we still want to change the frequency, which would be very nice because then we can really make you scream. So on value changed from this slider, which I've just copied from the cute declarative examples. It's very nice with some examples. Thank you. Um, and on value change, then we set the frequency of the tone generator. And we set it to the value. There, that should work. Hey, we can set the frequency. So we can say... Okay. How many are going old? Can you hear this? Oh, wait. Ugh. Okay, so here we have a tone generator which uses functionality that's definitely not avail available in the Qt Quick APIs that we have right now. But as you can see, it's very, very easy to create something that just uses plugs into the Qt Multimedia Kit C++ APIs. Finally, I want to get a little crazy. Let's do a little beatbox. We want to dive into some of the other APIs that we have. Specifically, the the um, of course the sound effect. Sound effect, yes. I've um, there's a bunch of stuff here because I'll build on it afterwards. Um, but we have a big button, and then we have a main QML file, which is what we're going to look at today. The big button just. So, so, uh, emits the, sig uh, the click signal like we've seen before and draws uh, some pretty colors and stuff like that. So if we um, run this, then you'll see we have 
some big buttons that don't do anything except look pretty. Ooh, pretty buttons. Colors. So that's what we want to start looking at here in the main file of our QML. Um, so I should have about 20, 25 minutes left for, for doing this. Let's see if I can fill that much time doing an actual quick application. It's going to be hard. So we have a sound effect. And it has a source. Um, and I've been very provident and given them names that correspond to the colors, because otherwise I couldn't remember. Um, and then we just call it red sound. And then we take the red button, and then we uh, unclicked. Then we play the red sound. Let's see if that works. Ooh. See, it's all very, very, very exciting. I can see you're on the edge of your seats now. So can anyone guess what the next three elements I'm adding is? Oh. Oh. Yeah, I know. But well, we have some blue sounds, and we have some green sounds, and uh, this is going to be copy-paste. I can see that right now. This is just too much. There we go. Green and... And, of course, yellow. Why do you have to be so long, yellow? And then we want to hook up our buttons. Ah, blue sound. Yes. And I can't spell worth anything today. I would blame it on jet lag, but I actually don't feel jet lag. It's really weird. I may suffer from symptomatic... Um, capitalization syndrome. So here we have our little beatbox application and we can <laughs> uh. Okay. Yeah, I I know, I know. It's not the most exciting of things, which is why I thought a little ahead of time. I thought, okay, you have these four buttons. What does that remind you of? Anyone know the Simon game? classic from uh, our childhood, where you have four colors and then it plays a sequence and then you have to match that sequence, otherwise you fail. So let's create that. That'll be fun. Again, I've been a little ahead of time myself and I've actually implemented the game logic so that we don't have to sit here and sit me code JavaScript, which I'm not doing on a daily basis, so it would be a very, very sad experience for all of us. Um, and then I have a message screen, which um, I'll be adding in a second, um, so that we can have the full display of the um, of our application. So when we want to to use this, I'll just sorry, I'm just going a little back and forth here, mistyping. So the game. It's very simple. You have a number of game states. You have the initial state when the, it's playing a sequence and then when you're playing a sequence and then whether you fail or not. And then you have some button IDs because we want this to handle our button clicks. Yeah, it's not the most interesting to go through. But it does all the playing here. Yeah, it's pretty easy. So. Let's add some of the things we want here. So we have the two sound effects for when you win or not. Let's add those down below, below the other ones. Um, we have the message screens. This one I don't want to code out because that's just hideous. Um, but the message screens are, are full screen. 
where you can put some information in and it will handle a mouse click or tap as it were if you're looking on a, on a mobile device. So if we create a message screen here and give it an ID that matches something that we have, the win message, then uh, we can fill the parent and make sure that it's not visible from the beginning because that wouldn't look very nice. And then we want to add an image to it. Um, I'll show the images when we play because it would be hasty of me to to ruin all my surprises beforehand. Um, so let's just uh, source it and give it an idea. Uh, fill it. Um, oops. Yay. And then the last, we have this fail message as well. And we have some helper functionality here, down here. The helper functionality is because we want the progress of the, the game to happen by itself after we click and stuff like that. So I have two timers that, that handle our our uh, progression. And then we have the the regular problem um, where if here in the message screen we have a mouse area and when the user presses this mouse area, then there we have to progress in our game state. But if I just create a, a, a game and import my game uh, JavaScript here, then it would be a different instance of it than if I did it from the than the one I have in my window. So therefore, I go back and have a helper function in the window just to make sure that everything is taken care of. And then, of course, we want to import our our JavaScript. Okay. So if we run it now. Then we get this, and when we click, then something happens. But nothing really progresses anyway, because we're still just playing the sounds. So if we just hook up everything to make sure that it's nice and neat, and I should have done constants for these, because we hate magic numbers. But if you bear with me this time, then maybe we can survive anyway. Um, then we have a game. So we have this game running here, and it plays a sound, and then when we press, then we can follow along, and I'll be somewhat silent here, because otherwise I can't concentrate and I'll fail, which would be really sad. Now, this isn't a, a session on deployment, so therefore I've already deployed it to my N9 here. Um, I did that just last night, actually. Uh, took me about 10 minutes. Most of it was spent trying to remember to read the instructions. <coughs> I am an engineer, I can't help it, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, if we hook this up, There we go, slightly squashed because the format doesn't work. But here we have the application, and oops. <laughs> so that was a quick game in, um, in uh, Qt Quick, <laughs> using the multimedia APIs. and. Um, I'm, this game, I, when I first did my coding for my demonstration, it took me literally three hours. And then my deployment, which we don't talk about. So, hopefully, I've shown you that it's somewhat easy to use the multimedia APIs with Qt Quick, and that you can also uh, implement your own functionality using the C++ APIs. 
if you haven't already, I, I hope you'll go download the Qt SDK and um, if you're a desktop developer, fetch the mobility package and get that running. Um, and I wish you the best of luck with that. If you feel that you need more help to get started with C++ APIs and Qt Multimedia Kit, my colleague Dimitro talked about this last year at Dev Days, and the video is available from developer.qt.market.com slash videos, where you can view it. And he has some really cool demo sets as well. Thank you. So, I know I startled everybody into submission, but any questions? <laughs> In the um, uh, read data function in your tone generator, how long do you get to um, return a buffer of data, and what happens if you take longer than that? If you, the, the time that you have depends on how large your buffer is. So if you have a buffer that is that corresponds to 100 sec milliseconds, then you have 100 milliseconds to fill the buffer with new data. And if you run out of data in the buffer, then you start getting the clicks and the and the stutters in the in the sound file. Uh, similar, if you're doing input, then you have to read it before it starts losing data in the overflow. I'm sorry. You have a whole buffer's worth. Yes. I, I remember the buzzword for known uh, from last year or mm -hmm. a year ago. Uh, how is phonon related to the multimedia kit? Phonon is a uh, separate component in Qt. Um, it was implemented, I believe, by the KDE guys for sound support in KDE and was inclu included in uh, Qt via that route. Um, it's a component that's there. It's not supported by Nokia, um, but it is there, um, and at least until Qt5, where it will be completely deprecated and will be removed. You can still get it, uh, I believe, from from the KDE installation or directly from their site, but it's not uh, part of the Qt delivered by Nokia. I was wondering, do you have any um, primitives to do synchronization between various uh, audio sources and video to do some advanced uh, multimedia applications? Like, do you have a clock or something like that you can uh, map your, or link all your uh, multimedia sources to? It's something that we've been looking at, but it's not part of the current API. Um, it is very nice functionality to have, I totally agree, but it's not part of the API now. People just want to get out of here, I can see. Okay, so if there's no more questions, then um, thank you very much. Do you have a question? Just, just wait for the microphone. Is there any support for the MIDI protocol in Qt? The which protocol, sorry? Uh, MIDI. You know. MIDI. Yeah. Um, there is no MIDI engine included in Qt at the moment. Um, it is. We have a research project to include one in uh, Qt 5, uh, but it depends on license stuff, uh, which I have no clue wh whether it will resolve, be resolved or what. Thank you. I can't believe no one asked about the important thing, how do you actually get mo uh, mobility on the desktop? Because it's not included in the, the standard Qt SDK. <laughs> so that's how you do it. Whew. It's actually not as hard as it looks. Um, and of course, all the slideware will be uh, shared afterwards um, through the Dev Days site. Um, there is, at the bottom, a link to a, uh, an issue in our external Jira system. This issue is 
to um, have it included in the Qt SDK. If it's something that you'd like to see, I really, really urge you to go to this bug report and vote for it, because I really want it. <laughs> OK. Yes? Um, another question about uh, Quick 2.0, and yes. uh, how does the video component uh, integrate in that, and uh, does it work smoothly, or do we have uh, anything special to It make? will work smoothly. Um, at the moment, we are actively developing on the on the video components for for Qt Quick 2 and Qt 5. So we do have some artifacts and weird behavior and stuff like that, but that's actively being worked on. Um, I haven't, I don't have any slides about it specifically, but we'll have a um, video output element where you can have different sources that you can hook into this, so you can use the camera as a source for an uh, output element, or you can have um, a media player as a source, or your own QML item can be a source of, uh, of uh, video data. Um, and then, of course, you also have a viewfinder that you can use the camera so that you get all the focus rectangle and all that nice stuff. Yes? Um, the uh, Qt Multimedia Kit, for which platform is it actually available currently? Is it Symbian? Um, currently, Qt Multimedia Kit runs on Symbian and Hamazon, as well as Mac, Linux, and Windows. And there is also, in the in the Qt Mobility 1.2, there is support for a number of other platforms, but they may be sketchy, so kind of like Windows CE and stuff like that. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, what backend do you use on Mac? Uh, QuickTime 7 or uh, yes. QGKit? QuickTime 7. And then we have for the some of the, the low-level audio things, we use Core Audio directly. OK, so it's not possible to uh, uh, make a 64-bit application since you use QuickTime 7. There are. 64-bit APIs for part of QuickTime 7. The C APIs are not available. I know because I just ran into it the other day because they changed the build system. Um, but you can make 64-bit applications using the, uh, the... It will link against the Qt Kit framework. Um, and I think also uh, QuickTime. But I'm not entirely sure about the, the exact linking of this, but I at least create 64-bit applications on my Mac that uh, run and use quick uh, multimedia. Thank you. Yeah, well, the last question brings me uh, to another question. Yeah. So which backend uh, do you use on the uh, Linux or the zoo of multimedia APIs there? On Linux, our backend uh, for the high-level stuff, media player and video playback and stuff like that, uses GStreamer. And for low-level audio stuff, is uh, depending on your setup, either Pulse Audio or Also. Thanks. So if there's no more questions, then I want to thank you all for taking the time to be here. <laughs>